at six o'clock. Um, I'll turn turn the meeting over to Todd. Yeah. And we're going to be discussing a ten year plan. Go ahead, Todd. Thank you everyone for coming. It's exciting to see a turnout. I've done this in my third town plan update here. And there's more people in this room tonight than there was in the last two town plan approval process hearings combined. So uh, that's fabulous. Uh, first and foremost, we have an older version of the town plan that the select board and trustees met jointly with up at Copley Country Club this fall. This fall. This is the old one. Oh, yeah. 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 First in the town plan, I would ask the select board to make a motion to approve the changes as written. We can still discuss them later, so we can all move on to the clean version of the town plan, so all working off the same document tonight. So those are the changes that are been agreed to, not to re-litigate that hearing. We make them, then we're officially working on this document. And we can go back and discuss any of those changes if you'd like, but I'd like to start here so all we one version of the town plan can be seen. Got it. Do I hear a motion regarding that? So moved. Motion second by Judy, second by Gary. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. So we can still discuss what was in there, but that just means we're everyone in the room is working off the same version of the plan, which is wonderful because there are 18 versions of the plan that are really not exaggerating. We all have the 18th version, so that's a great start. So to provide a little bit of uh, kind of the framework for this evening, the Planning Council has been working on a town plan. I went back at my notes. We first started this in 2018 and really started reworking the chapters in 2019. So literally we've been at this for three years. We spent the better part of the last year in public hearings. We've had a lot of public input, actually a lot more than other times to update the plan, which has been wonderful. And the planning council forwards the town plan to the select board for this hearing. The town plan is a joint plan. It also has a village trustee hearing, which will take place on Wednesday evening. The town plan for both boards needs two public hearings based on our population size under statute. And after the second hearing of both boards, the boards can both vote on the plan. As a joint plan, the plan that the select board votes to approve ultimately, which is probably in January or maybe later, has to match what the trustees approve. So we all have to follow the same direction here. And when we do that, it's really helpful. For the purposes of the select board changes, the select board can make changes to the plan. They can't rework the entire plan without starting the town plan process over again. So the, planning the planning council builds the foundation for the plan, and the select board is really just putting the roof on it. They can make language changes. They can't be substantive in nature. If they're substantive in nature, you basically go back to square one and you start all over again, which is okay. The select board may decide to do that, and we want to make substantive changes and start over. That's a choice of the board or the choice of the trustees. So uh, with that being said, I don't have any other thing to present. I'm happy to just take public comments on the plan and the board so chooses. I just want to kind of reiterate what you said, Todd. I know that um, the planning council and Todd have spent thousands of hours on this, literally over the past three years. And um, I've been seeing a lot of a lot of posts on social media about you know not liking this or not liking that. But this has been a three year process, and this is like the eleventh hour. And we have there's been dozens of hearings. There's been lots talked about, and we've come down to this draft that we all like. Um, we may not like everything in it, you know, there may be some minor things that we want to change um, and, um, and we can do that, but like Todd said, if there's anything that's a substantial change, like, for instance, changing a zoning in an area or changing a building to commercial or something like that, that's a substantial change. Um, we can't do that. We'd have to go all the way back to square one and start over. So. Um, I just want to remind everybody of that as I'm, you know, I appreciate our county, our planning council tremendous amount. They have worked tirelessly on this with lots of input from lots of people. And um, just want to let everybody know that um, my plan here tonight is to sort of run the meeting. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to allow public comment for an hour and it can be a person can speak for two to three minutes. And, and say their comment. It won't be like a dialogue. We're not gonna answer questions. That's not how the hearing works. Um, but you can, you can say your comment. And then if everyone has had a chance to speak, you can speak again. So you can speak two times, up to two times, if there's room, if there's time. 
and um, and be respectful for every from everybody. And I'd also like to see everybody like stand and say your name, where you live, and what your comment is. And if you can do that, everything go great. Wow. But I just wanted to also tell you that uh, what Todd said. You know, I've been here for going on 14 years and never had a room like this over a zoning thing, and it's great. It's great. I love the public involvement. You know, I love that part of it. And if there's big things that we have to change, we'll make the change. And and the the town plan isn't meant to encompass everything that happens in town. Um, I think Todd would agree with that. You can do things that are not on the plan. If there's something that you know of that you think should be in that town plan, it, you know, it can be done. The town plan is a guideline to go by. It's not, you know, set in stone and you can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Um, it's just the plan of the town for 10 years. And we, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a moving target in a way, but we try to nail it down for 10 years. So. Excuse me, Bob. Yeah. Hi. Kelly Connell. Oh, Kelly, how are you? So I just have one question. Is there going to be a forum open where we can ask questions? That wouldn't be tonight, right? No, you can ask questions. You can ask yeah. questions. Yeah, public comments or questions. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'd love. We can ask questions, but it's it's not meant to be a dialogue back and forth. I'm just curious yeah. about the dozens of meetings that supposedly were had because this is the first one I've heard about. We've and worked on it. Know there was a town plan going on. Yeah, we worked on it for three years. And I paid close yeah. attention to the stuff. And at the end, at the end, Hancock is our, is the chair of the planning council, right? And you can, um, how many meetings have you been talking about town plan for? Where? But where? Where were they? Where right were here. They put, where were they put out to the public? All of our meetings are, are posted on our website and all the it's agendas been, are. Chris, it's been the newspaper, it's been at the post office, the library, the town offices, it's everywhere. Has everybody seen that? Has no. no. It's all no, here. Nobody's, no, people haven't seen that, so you guys are not, huh? You've seen it? Oh, good. I'm glad that you have a, a lot of us, I don't trust you. Yeah, you're a trustee, okay. Well, that that doesn't really count, but normal people are saying, I've just heard people the end. I think, um, I could speak to that too. I think there is some confusion where um we like the town government has said there have been dozens of meetings but there haven't been dozens of these type of meetings that were like where explicitly like the whole public was invited to comment i mean the difference is you can attend any planning council meeting and there is an opportunity to speak your concerns and that's what they're referring to when they're saying there have been dozens of meetings just so you know, it, there has there haven't been a bunch of public forums like this. Okay. But you're always welcome to attend a town government meeting. And I, having be, being new to town government, I agree with you. It is hard. So it can be very hard to find and navigate um, when and where the meetings are. It is. And um, we can take that feedback and try to and to, and be better about. Um, the only thing I knew about yeah. this meeting was your post on front porch. Oh, great. Cool. The other thing that you can do is you can always give your email address to Todd and he'd send you agendas or send you. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, getting involved is great. Um, you know, I appreciate that. Wow. Well, if we could, please. Jim ATD has asked the folks when they want to speak with technical speaker. Because we're having such a loud room, the acoustics are not wonderful in here. Yeah. In order to capture the dialogue clearly, if folks come up on the outside themselves with the microphone. About the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi, Kathy. Kathy Chasey, 70 Poplar Avenue. So, I don't know if you kind of know where to begin, but so I have to like disagree on your public, um, putting out public for meetings. And maybe going forward, you can be more in detail, because if I had seen a meeting for this access road that's already been named Alexander Road for access, I definitely would have been to every one of them. Now, I might not have changed anybody's mind, and I'm getting to the age where I'm not fighting you guys. But I do feel that I should have been involved in those meetings because you're coming kind of far from my property. 
it go out 10 feet from my property line, putting that road in? Or is that road going right on my property line? And this. Can you, sorry, can you refer to the page number so we're all yeah. literally, literally on the same page? Okay, thank you. 30, 30, 37. This doesn't do me anything at all. I can't see where anything's going to happen a foot from my property line or 10 feet from my property line. And I'm not even saying it's going to happen yet, but nobody said anything to me. And I think going forward, when you do things like this in the village where the property is very small, that you should at least include people adjoining property owners. I mean, this is a shock to me. I'm totally shocked. I, I can't even believe it. I mean, and you're not going to change your mind because you already named it. The baby's been born. <laughs> you don't name a baby until it's born, and this baby's been born. <laughs> well, can you so, comment on that one on that uh, that particular? This thing is a, you're this. About? So the uh, the language Miss Chafee's talking about is trying to solve the traffic issue that happens every morning and sometimes in the afternoon when schools getting in and getting out, where everyone who lives up by Oramo Mountain Road, Elmore Road, that whole area, Maple Street, has to cycle down in front of the fire station, back up and go back up Copley Avenue. So the school was presented with multiple options of it's, ways. I would like to know those multiple options. I, have, I feel I have a right to know what those options were. Whether you accept any of them or not, I still feel I have a right to see what those options were. Give me were. a second, I'll talk about them. Okay. So the school was presented with multiple options in the draft chapter, and the school largely wrote their the education chapter. That's from the uh, the, the school board and the uh, their staff. So the options were to uh, come multiple ways to the property. On Trips Corner, there's a right-of-way further up. There's the one that the, the school chose here because it's the shortest and it's the flattest and it's the most cost-effective and you're not dealing with significant grades. So the intent here is, and there's no, to, to allay some of your concerns, there's no construction planned, there's no right-of-way given, uh, this is private property, there's no guarantee any of this would ever happen. It just basically says, hey, we have a traffic problem that cycles around the fire station, we'd like to solve it. This is the most economical way to solve it in the most cost-friendly cost manner so people can actually not have to cycle to the fire station. They could come off the end of Maple Street, cut right through like the kids do right now. Most of the kids from the area walk this, almost this exact path and go up to the school. This would allow cars to do it too, to solve the traffic problem at the fire station, that intersection of 12 and 15A and probably yeah, out. But so, but in your plan, you have one to two years. So that's very confusing to property owners. When you go back to your back page, you have one to two years to have that totally done. That's to work on it. I, I think you're misunderstanding. The plan is an aspirational document. It's things we'd love to do. Uh, there's no guarantee the town will get this right away. We'll have the money to purchase this right away. The existing property owner could say, no, this was the school's choice of where they wanted to come in. It makes the most economical sense. That's why it's in the plan. So the plan is basically saying, hey, there's a traffic problem at 8 a.m. It's really hard to get through the intersection of 15A, 12, Copley Ave, and most of it's caused by traffic coming from the east, cycling through by the fire station up to Copley Ave. There's another way to do that that would solve the problem at the intersection. The plan also talks about Darling Road, for example. If Darling Road would be a through road, people can come through Darling Road and get to the elementary school that way, even though it's a through road on paper, it's never been built. The one, the one that is viable, that's the most viable from the school standpoint, um, that they could do because they own the property is the one that goes through by trips. By, well, yeah. Because they own that and that, that's their own piece of land. So maybe I need to go to the school board, but really I've lived there for 19 years. So if you want to know anybody that knows about the traffic problem, it's me. Yeah. I mean, I change my work hours so I don't have to leave in that time. Right. And I see all kinds of things. So when it comes to that time, I really think you should involve the people that live on that road that are involved in that every day. And that little, I mean, I'm probably going ahead, but there's so many options that, and I don't know what your options have been because no, nobody has This told is what me. the school board chose. So okay, it wasn't this, so no one in this room made this decision yet. So. But I'll go to the school board too because there's so many other, there's so many other options, you know, maybe a one way in and then one way out. So you're not doing three, three rows into one. Right. But you really need to, there's a lot of options. I mean, I've thought about yeah. it for 19 years. Yeah. So I, yeah. and, and anything you do there is not going to fix any problem until you have other drop-off points for the high school, because now it's one spot 
and you got to fix that road in front of the fire department, and I hate to say it, but you need to put a roundabout in there so people can ro go through. The trucks are so big, they take up the... That's, the also, that's also in the plan. We need you to know, move on. I mean, yeah. so yeah, anyways... we, we got to move on. Yeah, I do. Yeah, my two minutes. But okay, thank you for listening, and please put me on if yeah. you're still on the board, whatever. Right. I really would like a phone call yes. or yes. a letter that you're going to meet on this situation. Yes. And, you know, Mr. Fischel should, too, and, you know, anybody that's up that road. Because I know we have a lot of good suggestions, whether you listen to them or not, but we should be able to voice our opinion. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. I believe Tracy owns the right-of-ways you're talking she about. Well, the, school, the school negotiated the school with her at some point. The school owns um, a 25-foot piece, but Tracy was owns willing a, to owns beat over yes. enough for a 50-foot. As it is right now, it could be a one-way. Like a one way in drop off. Well, I know this because, yeah. The trips or... I served on a capital project committee up there. That's why I'm familiar with it. And I know that that is something they could do because they own a the property and then Tracy is going to. Right. Gonna... And, you know, up there, it should be uh, up and it should be a circular driveway. Yeah. Walkways to one school, walkway to the other. They turn around, they come, and they go. Yeah. I know when uh, this, this is kind of memories, but my dad used to tell me that's how he used to go to school. You drive in there. You could drive in there in 1955. Right. You know, and that was part of the school entry. But that was a long time ago. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Next public comment. Go ahead, ma'am. Come. Yes. Yeah. Please. We're starting. We're using a timer now. We got kind of got behind on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Hillary Warner. I live on Olive Street. I want to thank Todd and the Planning Council for their work on the plan. I took the opportunity to provide some input and ideas in the spring because it was posted on the front porch forum so i read version 12 or whatever it was at that time and was grateful for how enthusiastically my participation was received i have three comments um the first one is that i love the high density downtown area housing i'm sure that homeowners who are affected by the various projects have my sympathy and at the same time i think it all makes a lot of sense my second comment is that on page 46, the plan encourages households and businesses to explore using wood for heating purposes. I'm concerned about encouraging the use of wood for heating in densely populated areas because as it is now, sometimes when I walk to or from work, the air quality around some homes that are burning wood is so poor that I have to put my mitten over my nose as a filter. I fear that if wood burning increased in the village, it would become, could become a significant air quality problem. We're going to encourage anything related to wood burning. I would suggest that it would be replaced in efficient wood burning appliances with more efficient ones. And my third comment um, has to do with open space and non motorized recreation. Uh, with the decline in agricultural use of land and increased interest of people moving to the area, I believe it's imperative that we combine public and private interests to protect more areas for outdoor enjoyment before it's too late. I speak as an avid mountain bicyclist, cross country skier, walker, and lover of the outdoors. I looked at Hardwick professionally designed 11 mile trail network behind the stage of the high school on the land owned by the town of private electric and private landowners. I also looked at Montpelier, which is currently looking to add 80 acres to its centrally located Hubbard Park. Callis, which has 14 miles of trails entirely on private land through voluntary year to year agreements with landowners. And East Montpelier, which has 15 miles of trails on private and protected land with a goal of connecting the community and its school in the neighborhood. The Morristown Town Forest and its trails are lovely, but it's a 15 minute drive and some of the trails are quite difficult. The best opportunity I see for something of this nature would be to connect the existing trails on school property with land to the east on by more still water and light. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a substantive change to the plan, but I just wanted to throw that out there as a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Could Thanks you, for your input. Could you, uh, you, you had your third point. Was it in the plan already? Was it just something you were adding? We talk about trails in there, but connecting out through water and light is something that's in line with what's already doing. I wouldn't consider that a substantive change. So okay. that's something that we could massage and add for the January hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Let's introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jennifer Andrews. I live on Vanette's Road. Um, as was already acknowledged, town plans are an enormous document that takes a ton of work, as I'm sure Todd and his support staff know, as well as the planning commission and the board. 
I'm here tonight representing the Morrisville Conservation Commission to recommend to you the uh, inclusion of the support of a conservation fund in our town plan. There are now over 62 towns in our state and counting that have one. A conservation fund is a strategy used to protect natural resources. And as you can see, if you have a plan with you, on page two down the bottom, it is stated that a need for more recreational land, as the previous um, citizen who just spoke also um, spoke about, uh, it's a uh, need for more recreational land as well as to protect buffers along wetlands, rivers, bogs, etc. So a conservation fund would include support for wildlife inventories, natural resource inventories, community events for education, and the gathering of information um, from the public in our town. It would leverage the availability for other funding we will need as we engage and focus on local conservation priorities. It would be a fund that would enable us to move quickly on projects that needed immediate action it would allow us to partner with other land trusts, landowners, state and federal grants like the Land of Water Conservation Fund, ANR Watershed Grants, and other foundations such as the Federal Community Forest Program and the Forest Legacy. <laughs> so as you can see, this fund would be used for our town's interests in preserving and protecting Morristown's natural resources and much needed recreational areas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wants a time Jennifer, I wanted to respond to you. I was thinking along those lines, I love the idea of having a fund started. And um, we actually have a source of funds within the town already that we haven't um, haven't used in a long time. Eric was talking about the Morristown Development Fund. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about using it for different things. Um, Morristown Development Fund is a fund that uh, we give low interest loans as a source of gap funding to businesses that want to get established, but we haven't had any for a long, long time, any, any, you know, applications or anything that became real. And we have a substantial amount of money in that fund. And um, I would love to see if, if, you know, some of that deferred to that fund. It would be great. We, we've talked to, amongst uh, the MDF board about finding something just like that to create um, something like that. But I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. I think a conservation fund is a very specific kind of um, fund that is recognized by other bigger funding sources. And, and I think it, it is um, really prudent for our town to have one so that um, when things come up, we right. have uh, the bigger funders recognize that we have made commitment in Morrisville to right like if if uh, a piece of property comes available next to the town forest or something we, we could buy it or we could you know have closer means to buy it I like that so you're also saying it, it would allow us to leverage funding if we have proof that we're um, investing in that right. yeah. Yeah. that's great thank you thanks for your input thank you. who, who else would like to speak go ahead Kristen um, I live I'm disappointed to see that I don't see the steep slope language included that was removed during um, the previous session between the trustees and select board members. Um, am I mistaken that it's not included in this plan? That's what they have the first one through. They adopted the second one so we can work off the same plan, but doesn't mean they couldn't talk about it and potentially direct me or the planning council to add it back in. So you're free to talk about it. I would it, like to talk about it and bring it back to your attention. Um, I have brought in the maps that I had given to yes. and Jess. He's like, pass us around. Could you, tell, um, could you also then, go back to the, do you know what page you're on? I don't know what page it is okay. anymore because it's no longer in there. Uh, the old um, one was so 30, 30 and 31. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we, have it, we have it right here, Kristen, for okay. you. Thank, you. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't bring my old copy. It's okay. I, was, I, was I, have, eight, I have 18 of them. So I thank them. you. <laughs> I have a few of them myself. <laughs> um, so 30, 30. what I also put on your desk is um, 
every other town in the loyal counties speak slope language. Um, I support that it is in there. There's a copy of that for each of you, um, if you'd like to pass them around. Um, you'll see that they reflect different levels of restriction and definition um, or regulation, or um, but each includes steep slope language as an important natural resource that we should protect or consider valuable um, for everyone who lives in town. It adds property value to protect them by increasing our views. Um, it also adds to the ecological function as wildlife corridors um, and reduces um, stream pollution through reduction of erosion um, waters, like sediments through erosion. The steeper a hill is, the faster water moves down it. Water moves downhill and carries sediment, which causes erosion. It's not complex, it is important. I'd like you to please include the steep slope language that just is a definition of what steep slope is, and also that anything over 25% be reviewed by the Development Review Board, taking um, an added responsibility of regulation off of Todd and adding eyes to an important issue in our town. Um, we have high elevation that is beautiful, as many of the hunters in our room know from firsthand experience in the past few days. I'm sure you've been out there appreciating the steep slopes. When you're out there, Think of it again and consider what would it do if a hill fell? What does it look like? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kristen. Thanks, I know that you. I have in my minute my notes from our a joint meeting of keep. So yeah, I don't Thank have you. I don't it, have recollection. Yeah, it of, wasn't a majority. We we it was a split vote to decide to right. keep it or not. Yeah. At that at that point. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that you can review it again and consider it. As we pulled between right. the trustees and right. select board members, there was, I don't remember the vote count, <laughs> but it was, I know you two were one of the key bits. Or, yeah. And how about you? You didn't, you didn't want to vote. I was really on the fence. I, yeah. I totally understand what you're saying, but I'm, I know that um, I didn't want to have the village trustees and uh, select board at odds with any one thing, you know, have it be one thing that really kept us. And you could explain that too, Todd. If, if, if you want to say that this was outside of the village, there is right. a, an exception. It does not have anything to do with the right. steep slopes inside of the village, like the gorge behind Copley right. and Country Club. Right. This is only in the town property. Right. And, but they so, and you'll see on that map that that mostly reflects the slopes of Elmore mm -hmm. and up by Mud City. Yeah, I understand that. I just the, the village trustees still weigh in on it. Um, mm -hmm. together with the select board. If you explain what happens if that, that happens, if the select board says, we want this, and the trustees say, no, we don't want it. You well, have to create two. Yeah, we're unique in, in, in the county. There are many places like Hyde Park and Johnson where there are separate, uh, the village and the town act separately. There are separate town village governments. There's a town village manager, a town manager. There's a village zoning board, a town zoning board. That creates a lot of red tape for people. What we do well here is we have a planning council and a development review board that is jointly appointed by both the select board and the trustees. We work off joint zoning bylaws and a joint town plan. So ultimately both boards need to agree to the language, otherwise it doesn't survive. The, if both boards are, are adamant about, I want the plan to say X and they want the plan to say Y, that's the first part of breaking up our communities and basically writing two town plans, two sets of zoning bylaws, two planning commissions, two DRVs, double your staff, that kind of thing. So we're trying to keep the plan uh, so in the language that both boards can agree to. Otherwise, we have two separate plans. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to... Jamie, you're first and you can go next, sir. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is James Brewster. Um, if you're in Morristown, um, there are more items on my list here that I'm going to cover because of the time limitations. Uh, maybe we'll come back around to them uh, with this one later. Uh, I am going to start by saying uh, that it's my understanding that we're all working on a document that became published today. 
Um, and I think that's really unfortunate that uh, the folks in this room haven't had a chance to look at the document in full uh, that's uh, under consideration. Uh, especially since those changes uh, uh, were made three or four weeks ago. Um, this document also needs revision dates so that we know when it was last revised, maybe what those revisions were. Um, not to mention it doesn't have a date on it, period. Um, and this is a one-off. If our town had a Twitter account at 20, is there? 2020 to 2030. I know, but it doesn't say what date was written. Uh, as a one-off, I would say if we had a Twitter account in town, if we were responsible enough to do that, um, someone could have put that out there and said, hey, there's an inversion out there. Um, but uh, items that I would like to see or that I'm concerned about, uh, there's no mention of EG, EV charging stations uh, in the town plan. Uh, most recently in uh, November and October, uh, the governor specifically called out EV uh, charging stations and their importance. Oh, let's see what else. Transportation on page 11. I don't know if that's old page 11 or new page 11. Uh, talks about truck climbing lanes should not be uh, truck lanes. Uh, truck lanes on Route 15, truck lanes on Route 100. Uh, that's just sick. I mean, are, do people really think that if we put in a small truck lane, it's going to really speed up the commute for that many people on their way to Burlington or Essex? The amount of cars that could get by on a small truck lane is relatively few, uh, especially considering the time, energy, and money it would take to construct it. Uh, additionally, uh, the references to Shootsville Hill should be removed. Uh, I went through there uh, just yesterday, the day before. I saw no signs that reduced the speed limit. It's still 50 miles an hour through there. Well, I don't know where someone's getting that from, but there are no signs that say 40, 45. There might be signs that say wildlife corridor. That's just a caution, as it should be, because it's a wildlife corridor. We should be being safe. Those signs are out there for the safety of the driver. Uh, so I think that piece should be removed. The walk bike safety plan mentioned on page 14 only talks about uh, implementing pedestrian related options from that plan, nothing about bicycle options. Um, those could be included. Uh, I think that safety plan could also be uploaded to, uploaded to the town website where people could review it. Uh, also, let's see, uh, plan support efforts to make both uptown and downtown more still safer and more accessible to bicycle traffic. My, my question would be how, provide some examples. Uh, and what about some of the roads outside of downtown more so, like Randolph Road or Stagecoach? How can we make them safe? Uh, talking about the airport, uh, do we have tangible proof that the uh, airport is an economic driver for the town? Um, you know, I live higher up here on the way out of town. And the approaches and uh, the departures from the planes are pretty loud. Uh, longer runway means bigger planes, means more noise. Uh, asking uh, town residents to pay for a village sewer system? I don't think so. Um, you know, spread that out across uh, whatever you want to call it, non user people. Um, that's already included in the cost of services and goods that the people in the village sell. So I'm already paying for those in that way. So I don't think, as a resident of the town, I should be paying for that. Uh, likewise, utility lines. Uh, utility lines, if they're going to be buried, that should be covered uh, either through directly with uh, more still water and light or the village. Um, child care, page 54. Uh, my kids are grown, uh, but uh, I would be really unhappy uh, to read the, the town plan and see that the child care section was nearly a copy and paste from the previous year with three or four words changed. That's all the consideration child care got. And it's an important issue. And all we got was a copy and paste. Uh, lastly, planning's easy. The implementation is hard. How are you going to do this implementation plan? How are you going to track it? What are your key performance indicators? Uh, my big issue, as many of you know, is a do handle property. Uh, I am adamantly against the use of saying prioritize gravel, because as you look back uh, through documents, you can see that that was not the intent at the original town meeting. Uh, and lastly, I'll be as nice as I can, uh, but this document is very difficult to read. This document needs a professional proofreader and editor, someone who is an independent third party, 
If I were an English teacher, I would barely give it a passing grade. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. You can go, Sarah, and then whoever's after that. Yeah. Uh, my name is Brooke Scatter. I live on White Park Road. Um, I'm concerned that the the merging or the combined planning between the village and the town is leading to compromises and treating the town like the village. And it seems that there is more rural character that's not reflected in this plan. Uh, I think the steep slopes is one thing, but also the proposed reduction of the minimum lot size is huge. It's uh, it would have a very dramatic change on the character of the town if it were reduced from 80,000 square feet to 40,000. I can't imagine how a 40,000 square foot lot in our area would be viable. And if everyone subdivided to under an acre, we would not have the rural landscape that we like, that brought us here, that maintains our environment. Um, so I think that needs to be very seriously considered. I would suggest removing it. I would suggest matching what our neighboring towns do, where you have areas of two acre minimum lot and areas of three or five acre minimum lot. Um, Stowe and Hyde Park both have their outlying areas, five acre minimum lot. Stowe has an interim three acre, and then they go down to two surrounding the village. For us to say that the entire town can be subdivided down to below an acre is pretty outrageous, and I think um, I think that needs some serious consideration. Um, I also agree with Jamie that prioritizing gravel extraction from the New Hamel property when it was purchased primarily for for open space and gravel. There's already been two phases of gravel extraction. I think reducing the prioritization of gravel and recognizing the recreation up there will be important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next out there? Ed, want to come up? Okay. I think Leah yeah. had her hand up. She can first. go. You can go next. He, okay. no, he was up there before. Okay. He was just quiet and polite back there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so I finally got comments. I finally got to reading the whole thing. The last couple takes a of while. Well, it takes a while, and the comment about the name is appropriate. It's well enough written. I just really couldn't use a professional text editor's touch. Uh, it's actually impossible to uh, proof and edit our own stuff because we know what it says. So I, I, I think it's well enough written. Um, I want to commend the people who worked on it, Todd and all the rest, for the extensiveness of the document. And that's one of the comments that I have to make is how, I don't know how common is a 20 year plan. I think uh, human society in the United States, even our political system, may be unrecognizable in 15 years. Right, it's 10. It's a 10 to year plan. we're living today. Yeah. So it's a little bit ambitious, but under the, uh, um, under the explanation that it's aspirational, well, that's fine. Um, a couple of things for that long lived plan, I might have liked to see, but then some of that's just my and a few other people's personal issues. Um, um, I'll come to that in a minute. Um, a lot is made about green space, uh, which is great, uh, but that is in the face of some real goose that this town has made. And uh, to the, the most glaring, of course, is the hockey rink pro property. It's a tragedy, it's a disgrace that somehow the town didn't muster the political constituency to save that thing. As it is, I don't know that I saw anything in the plan about making some use of the donut. I don't know if everybody knows that uh, it's permitted uh, and there's a state kind of reserve or whatever the state calls it on, on this, the water front part yeah, of it. It's a parcel um, of conserved property. That ought to be in the plan, it's something that the town ought to be vigorously pursuing. Uh, at one point, the high school had educational signs. They were using it as a teaching resource, which was great. I was out there before her child got in. I saw foxes and other things, and it was a wonderful place to work, walk. So 
that's not in the plan. Um, the Duhamel property, I don't know anything about. It's just that whatever the town had to promise to the Act 250 people to get it, uh, there's, you might make a case for forcing the town to adhere to that. And if that had certain um, limits on the use of gravel versus recreational, uh, the town should be required uh, to support that by going back to the original permit. But I, that's not a big topic of mine. The one thing that I did notice, and I was glad and unhappy at the same time to see, is that uh, finally there is some recognition of the existence of a potential park along the riverfront just below the generator. Well, isn't that wonderful? Um, for those who don't know, uh, George Clark in 1903 gave the town a gift and it somehow got into the hands through several interesting steps uh, of water and light. And at this point in time, and this is kind of like piecing things together through private conversations, which I will unhesitatingly divulge or betray at the moment, is that to me it looks like they're trying to do something with the properties and the deeds and whatever in such a manner as to extinguish the separate existence of Clark Park and the original parcel. For one thing, you can't really tell where the parcel is because that land is gone. You have to drop a plumb off down to whatever is currently there. Uh, it all got washed away by the 27th flood. So I'm glad that that's mentioned, including such language as um, boardwalk and pocket parks. You're welcome. Um, I've, I've been uh, discussing that since 2015 with a bunch of people, and I thought it might be wise to step back because water and light was having so much trouble with it that they didn't need a different issue. My feeling is very different at this point since they've expressed a direct and open hostility to any sort of recreation going on there. Uh, so currently, if you look at front page forum tomorrow, uh, you'll see the address to the work I put together. And let's see where it goes from there. Okay. The biggest thing. I, I you're over. Time way over. Is, you're way over. I'm sorry, I didn't know yeah. the time. But the biggest thing mess. missing there, of course, is the combination of village and town, and the elimination of, uh, of the participation of government and the running of a political entity, a municipal entity, by a power company. It's about time that the village and, and the town had its own department so that they could be run appropriately and water and light and the trustees cease to exist. Thank you. Thank Thank you. That, Thank language, you. that language was in there, was taken out of the plan, just so you know. Taken out, that's not supposed to. <laughs> okay, yes. go ahead. Hi, Leah Bronner, I live on uh, Jersey Way. Um, as I get confused with Jersey Way, but I live on Jersey Way. And um, I was looking at page 15, talking about walking, and I appreciate all the information on sidewalks. I would like to just mention that there's a lot of buildings and um, going up, and um, many people are going to be living in that area that have not previously lived there. And so I'm hoping that we can get a sidewalk. Uh, from basically where Randolph Road is up through, as you say, here to Bishop Marshall School, ASAP. Because I walk there and I end up walking right along, um, you know, the road and the ditch, and there's no sidewalk for um, uh, a, a good portion of that. So that, um, I hope that we can do that quickly. Um, also, it would be really good to have a crosswalk there because the bus does stop there, and so kids are crossing to get on um, to Jersey Way. And also, at the end, uh, it would be nice to have a bus stop there too at some point in that area location for people who are living up there. Um, I know a lot of stuff I'm not right. And um, what was it? Oh, yeah. On the north end of town, when I walk, down that way, there is no crosswalk from, I don't know what that name is, but over to Overshans right there. 
yeah, people whatever that TD is. TD Bank or People's, people's Bank. People's Bank. People's Bank. Okay, thank you. Um, there's no crosswalk. So if you are walking and you want to cross over to where Aldershant is, there's no crosswalk from basically where Hanford is. Um, so I'm hoping that we can um, address that as well. Because I like to walk around town. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Who's next? Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, Nancy Banks. Um, I just wondered if anybody had done a, a cost analysis of what, if we implemented this plan, the tax impact would be. Do we know that, Todd? We don't have no, I mean, there's so, there are so many options here. It's almost, that's an, not an answerable question. Okay. So nobody's really looked at it. Well, there are, I mean, there are myriad uh, alternatives for some of the things suggested in the plan. So you'd have to go through each iteration to figure out what the board decided. So no, I, I think the, I, I think you're asking for too big a range here for possible outcomes to come up with a cost. And the second question, by adding all of the housing to the village, does that, how does that impact our tax rate? I'm not the tax rate guy. I mean, this is not, it's not really a town plan <laughs> question, Nancy, unfortunately. The listers well, would be happy to answer, the listers would be happy to answer that. It does add to New development adds to the town's grand list, and the grand list growth helps offset the taxes the select board need to raise each year. So the last few years is one and a half percent, one percent grand list growth. So when the select board adopts a budget that says we're having a four percent overall uh, cost of increase in taxes, it really bumps down to three and a half percent, or two and a half percent, or three percent, depending on the grand list growth. So that grand list growth is very helpful to the board in help balancing their budget. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so I had uh, really, I think, two comments. One is that with this plan, we're really dramatically changing what Morrisville looks like with the increased development. And so I urge, I guess, all boards to err on the side of having more meetings or public hearings. I think that um, change is happening. It's going to happen. It's probably good. Um, but I think people um, want to know rather than, you know, so I think that the level of development, it, um, it's just human nature, it's a change. And, and so I think when you're going through this kind of period, you have to sort of err on the side of maybe having the extra hearing or making sure the hearing is well advertised beyond maybe what's just legally required because you know that there may be a lot of interest. So it's just a comment. Um, and I think long term it helps all the boards because people feel like they've been heard um, regardless of the outcome. And the other thing is that a lot of things in it, it seems like there's a tremendous opportunity to take advantage of some of the federal monies that's coming in um, through the pipe to maybe try to, to do some of the things in the plan. And I hope that the I, boards will be very aggressive in terms of working on our regional collaborations and state collaborations and whatever else we need to do to make sure that we're getting a share of those federal monies because i think some of the federal monies would address some of the water and sewer issues that were outlined here so i'm not sure 100 sure about that but i think that that right now is really important to the town thank you thank you who's next wally Thank you, Bob. Well, I'm John Rossi. I live at Southern General Jersey Lane right here in Lawrenceville. And a couple items. One of them is the discussion of Bugby Springs. Um, maybe most of you don't know in this room that at one time was the water source for the village of Lawrenceville. This plan is promoting a drastic increase in the population of the village more so so probably though that water source should be protected for birds to use dog it may be needed it's also very pure water in fact at one time the village board was approached to sell those water rights to somebody who wanted to bottle that having been on the board um, my concern is, is a couple the village of Morrisville, or the, the town of Morrisville, is quoted as being a quasi-central Vermont village. Well, in the process, 
been permitted or in the process of permitting, there's going to be 190 plus housing units in three tenths of a mile of Jersey Heights, correct? Somewhere in there, yeah, it sounds about right. Okay, that doesn't sound like a Vermont village to me. That sounds like downtown Barrie or the north end of Burlington. But that's what has happened with the every six months incremental zoning changes that have happened for the last three years. This board, the village board, the planning board need to look at that because it's been very beneficial to, develop, to high density developers, but for the single family homeowner in the village of Morristown is, or Morrisville is now an endangered species because they're not going to want to live here because of the density. Thanks, Wally. Case in point, if they put yes. the Alexander Road <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? Go ahead, ma'am. Hello, friends. My name is uh, Julie Matthew. I went to school. We graduate from Jewish Academy here with Bob Beeman, who's my class. How are you, Julie? I have uh, been living out of state for a long time, but I have always maintained ties here, and my family has made significant ties here, maintained significant ties here. My father was a member of the zoning board for many years and a business, successful businessman with a million dollar a year business. And he offered credit to people who could not afford to buy furniture so they could have a decent place to live and develop their own wealth. My mother was a psychiatrist here, the only one in the county because no other psychiatrist would agree to work for as little money as she made. And she helped a lot of people, including probably many of the folks in this room. And I have a really significant problem with all of the derogatory comments made about my family in this plan. I have a very significant problem with calling my building abandoned when we have been working diligently for 10 years to try to find a mere $750,000 to finish construction on this building when this town has seen numerous other buildings go up with very little affordable housing that cost more than 12 million or in the latest one on Hutchins Street 24 million dollars for a mere what 24 units that is criminal and I am sick of this harassment and Todd Thomas you have been slandering my family for too many years and I need you to stop it. It is all over these documents. It is all over the front porch forum. You have been saying horrible things and getting other people to try and get other people to say horrible things and I am sick of it. We have turned a the other cheek for many years because we thought maybe we could play nice with Morrisville, but I am no longer willing to accept that as the status quo. Now, this body may or may not want to hear that this plan needs to be changed, but it needs to be changed. All these derogatory comments need to come out, and they need to come out before it's republished before it's submitted to the state as part of Morrisville's requirement to fulfill its consolidated planning requirements with the state in order to get public funding and use public funding to support Todd Thomas and Trish and all the rest of the people who want to say horrible things and violate the Fair Housing Act and violate the ADA by saying that Housing for older people should be segregated and only be existing up near the hospital. That's craziness. People should live where they want to live. This plan doesn't do anything to require Morrisville to complete its sidewalks. There are broken sidewalks that violate the ADA. They need to be fixed. It shouldn't be just one sidewalk that people with disabilities or older people who trip 
should be allowed to walk on. This is not acceptable. And this should have been fixed in 1973, and it hasn't been fixed yet. That's when the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 was passed that said, fix your sidewalks, make them accessible. That's not acceptable that the plan in 2020 doesn't do that yet. Now, so you're real uh, you're I understand that. <laughs> if anybody wants me, I will let my sister to take over. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lauren Nephew. I live with my mom on Congress Street. 40 years as a psychiatrist making $35 an hour. And she saved a lot of you guys. So I don't want to hear any more bad things about her or my father, especially since now I can't understand anything. So Julie starts with I disagree with downsizing. Density for the land adjacent to Maple Street and Congress Street. The areas closer to downtown should remain higher density. My family's home is in this zone. We hope to add some housing development there. We did not get notice of this downgrading density. As to public comments, I recommend that everyone who disagrees that they have had an adequate opportunity to comment should submit written comments that Morrisville will be required by state and federal law to submit to the state and to keep on record as part of this plan. Julie will continue to draft more comments that point out all of your infirmities, and I hope that the town will take Julie's and other people's written comments seriously. It's not appropriate to prevent public comments to this draft. Um, the nephew building is not abandoned. It may look run down, but that's the historical society's fault because those stupid tin things were what they required us to put on, so that's just yucky. We have been actively developing that over the years. We've fixed up the foundation, we've fixed up, fixed up, we have like architectural and engineering plans, but the zoning board in this town keeps changing their little rules when it comes to our building. And there are other activities like the development review board process that was changed when we made a um, choice. I wish the town, and my mom wants the town, to talk to us directly about what they want in that space for the building. We will be meeting with Capstone and trying to figure out a good way to put together some low-income housing that's actually affordable instead of the stuff going up nearby. Um, moreover, the partial collapse in the Portland Street side of the building was caused by the town because its sewer water pipe was leaking directly into the building and undermined the foundation. You almost killed my brother David. I can't decide whether that's a good thing or not. <laughs> but I would really be upset if you did that and um, you would have been hurt forever. And it raised the level of its sidewalks above the sills of the building, causing it to flood. This is not, this can be, this needs to be fixed. Um, it is not a good thing that this town plan suggests that specific build, uh, businesses would benefit from um, like sidewalk renovation or something like that. Keep the plan generic. And I got two more comments before you pick me off the stage. Making a cement division on Brooklyn Street is really a bad idea for snow removal. I remind you to think about how hard it was to, to maneuver in the Copley parking lot when it had that tree planted cement thing. And housing up near Copley Hospital area, there are more people than living facility type people who want to live there, employees of the hospital, and people who want to have a good view of the nice farmland nearby. It doesn't have to just be hospital related living. People want to live everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Welcome to the Hospital of Copley. I wanted to just thank everybody. We really appreciate some of the changes in this current plan. Uh, thank you, Todd, for putting in the, uh, the property up at the hospital zone. Uh, it says that it's preserved to accommodate future health care needs, but you folks added the option of putting a child in Richmond Center there. 
We really appreciate that. We're currently working with uh, six partners, our son Copley, um, Royal Home Health and Hospice, they're all independent partners, Royal County Mental Health Services, The Manor, Tamara Family Medicine, and the Royal Health Partners. We're all working with the Royal Family Center to look at getting a substantial take care of child enrichment facility up there to take care of those organizations and then even have the capacity for others in town. So I really appreciate you seeing that change. Pass that on. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comment? Yes, ma'am. You can resume comments too at 7 o'clock yeah. after this. We started about 10 after. Yep. Hi. Hello. My name is Kristen Bogdahl, and um, I live on Jersey Way. Um, I, uh, I relate very much to the fact that this plan is aspirational, as Todd says, and um, I would just like to encourage um, all the bodies that are involved in it to um, bring more language into the plan that commits to preserving the character of um, a Vermont town like ours, um, and also to uh, making sure that our infrastructure is not overtaxed by all of the growth um, that is projected and that is already happening. Um, I think that you're hearing tonight from a lot of people who um, are concerned that maybe the growth is happening in a little bit of a willy-nilly fashion and not particularly looking at the big picture. Um, and I think that it's really important for um, to, for Morrisville and Morristown to not think of them, not think of ourselves as just an individual entity, but as part of a, a larger area. And I would encourage um, the board to be thinking about um, what the Regional Planning Commission is thinking about the larger area, because um, in the long term, it may be that uh, we need to be not assuming that Morristown needs to bear the brunt of this growth. Um, and uh, finally, I would say that I, I would really like to encourage all, all parties, because I realize that there are a number of committees that are sort of working individually, um, but that also contribute to the whole, whether it's the select board, the village trustees, um, the planning commission, the, the development review board, I think, and, and really all of us as citizens as well, I think we need to commit ourselves to really looking at what that best practices are for smart growth as we move forward. Because there are a lot of projects that have already taken place and or that are, have, um, either just been approved or about to be approved that um, I think are potentially uh, damaging to Morrisville in the, in the long run. Um, and I realize that it's a, a very complicated issue. Um, as uh, someone said in this room, I don't remember who, that planning is easy, that execution is hard, although I don't know that Todd would actually say planning is easy. Planning is not easy. <laughs> not easy. Um, because it is very complicated. But I, I I think that we really need to be careful and to be availing ourselves of best practices that have been developed elsewhere to ensure that we're doing this in a smart way. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else want to speak? Go ahead, Graham. I just have something quick. So. Uh, I, uh, also want to reiterate, you know, thanks to all the people who put in the time and effort into developing the town plan. It's taken a long time, and uh, there's been a lot of meetings and, and uh, that have been attended by a lot of different folks. Maybe not everyone has seen them. Um, you know, it certainly doesn't just jump right out at you. You know, I, I've gotten involved a little bit more in politics in the last, you know, three or four years, and you definitely need to search it out to try to find it. But once you do, you know, it is uh, there is a quite a steady stream of communications is available to keep you up to date on the, on the processes and, and things like that. So uh, thank you to all the people involved. Uh, I know it's not an easy process. Um, Sorry, Graham, can you introduce yourself? Sure. I, I, I know who you are. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Um, and uh, <laughs> Graham, Graham Mank, I live in Morrisville, yes. 
<laughs> and uh, I'd like to just point, uh, make a comment on page 49. There's a reference to a new affordable housing committee. Um, so we'll get into you know ways to help the town develop new affordable housing. And I'd just like to ask the board to consider, uh, I think it's a great idea, but I'd like to consider maybe removing the affordable part and just have a housing committee that can look at help you know, promoting housing where, you know, concerns of the community can be expressed to that committee, which they then can, you know, work with the planning commission uh, and the select board to help do that. But, you know, I feel housing is needed in town, which is why I'm, I'm developing uh, more housing. And uh, I think, you know, I'm a supporter of the Law Housing Partnership. I was on the board. Um, I think they're doing great, but they certainly can't, you know, do it alone. I'd like to see them have more access to, um, Create more housing, but also I think it'd be beneficial to have it more, you know, inclusive to considering all types of, of housing because you know single-family homes, duplexes, multi-family, both market rate and affordable. How many percentage of your apartments going up is affordable? Could you address the board? Right. They're affordable for all the tenants. Yeah. yeah. Laura. Laura. Go ahead, Dennis, and then you, Laura. Well, I mean, to address that, um, I thought I could get into it a little bit. As much as I respect her opinion, I really, as somebody who's been I get it. It's very hard to attend if people attack each other. Okay. I'd like to get into the word affordable if I could. Um, could you, sorry, could you Dennis Smith. Thank you. Let's go Thank you, Don. Affordable has a wide range of meaning. The numbers that I've heard of apartments in this town are not affordable to Morristown people. But when somebody from Chittenden County hears this same price, gosh, that's, that's a pretty good rate. And when somebody from Boston or New York hears that price, it's a hell of a deal. Mm -hmm. And we're going to end up with those people that can afford that rate. And our working people are not going to be able to afford affordable <coughs> housing. Thanks, Dan. Laura, go ahead. Hi, Laura Straits. I am currently serving on the DRB, uh, so I have a little more insight on uh, when these meetings have happened. Uh, based on that, I would like to say that there was a version uh, that the Planning Council originally submitted to both the uh, select board and trustees. Um, we, there were a few of us who caught wind of it and started voicing our opinions. I would like to see that document um, because what people don't understand is there have been meetings and six or seven items have been redlined. There was a uh, state slow, there was digester, um, lots of things that I think it's important that you know that your citizens have asked for them. I also think it's important that we know uh, from the trustees and the uh, effort of transparency um, what those were, who voted for them and against them. Um, I think also in time, in order to save time, that we don't start bringing up things that the select board and trustees have already decided will not be in this visionary uh, document. Um, I would also like to ask in future, if you're going to have a meeting where there's going to be a two minute limit, that you give us notice um, so that people can prepare. I read everything, I never saw anything about that. Um, I think it was, people were under the impression it was going to be an open conversation. So. Just for all concerned, if it's going to be a two minute, that way we can prepare and stick to your timeline. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Lauren. Who's next? I, I did have a question. Uh -huh. And um, because I've talked about this when I've gone to the Planning Commission, we're talking about the town plan. And there seems to be a conflict between the language recommended by the state and the language in the draft town plan about the river corridors. And I'm interested in the town regaining the downtown designation so that grants and other opportunities are available for affordable housing and other additional community improvements. So I'm just wondering if that language could be cleaned up so we get a, a 
definite approval on the town plan. And, that, and we don't have to have language about river corridor in the town plan. Are you, are you, is that a question? Yes. I don't think there's any issue with the language and for regarding river corridors in the plan as written. Okay, because I know the documentation- I think Eric would attest to that as well. Right. Documentation- Sorry to make you talk. I didn't know you didn't want to talk. No, that's fine. <laughs> no, it doesn't Yeah, there's no issue with the language. Either. Yeah, the river corridor language doesn't have to be in there. That's right. what I'm- Correct. Having. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any comments? From Zoom? From Zoom? Who's the question? I think Sarah is going to comment. No, she's been no? Well, this is good. It's exactly an hour. And now, uh, go back around. So we have an hour and a half of it. Well, we're, we're, we're actually going to take 30 minutes and have a deliberation about it, what we're going to have in it, our board is, and then we're going to come out and, and talk to Kat. And there'll be another public hearing. The next public hearing will most likely be on January 3rd. Is a continued public hearing. They have to have at least two hearings and they have to have a vote at their next regular meeting. So uh, as opposed to having something during Christmas time, January 3rd will be the next public hearing and there could be a possible vote on the plan unless the select board wants more hearings on January 17th. So those are your two dates to put in your calendar, the 3rd and the 17th. And any language changes, so the intent is the select board to deliberate tonight to settle on some language, any differences of opinion, and anything they want to massage out. Every time they change the language, they have to rewarn the plan. So at some point we have to get to a meeting we don't change language, otherwise we'll never get to vote on it. So the intent is to, as of right now, the original intent was to change the language tonight, get to the hearing on January 3rd with a new draft that hopefully you don't need any changes on so you can vote on it later that month. That's the plan as of right now. Kelly, I know you had a question and there's one more hand up. Do those two and then we're gonna go into deliberative I'm session. Sorry, I just broke my mouth. <laughs> don't worry about it. So I don't understand what you just said, and I'm sorry that I talking about that stuff, but um you said you guys are gonna adjourn for 30 minutes. We're gonna go into deliberative session to discuss all the comments we've had. To discuss the comment and yeah. then what's gonna happen? Then we're gonna come back out and we're gonna um Yes. Set a set a hearing date for January third, most yeah. likely. Okay. So, Todd, you made a comment that real, that concerns me greatly. Okay. And you said we're talking about the changes and how the changes are going to extend the period. Is there a deadline that this has to be done by? Well, the select board is the one who's pushed the timeline and wanted this done sooner rather than later. At some point, if we don't adopt the town plan, we'll be uh, not able to update our zoning bylaws. Okay, so when's that? Uh, that is coming, I believe, this later this spring. Okay. So the zoning is, is something that's a whole different issue, and I'm not going to get into that tonight because I've got to do a little bit more research on that because I don't know. I don't know a lot of people in here, but I do know that and you probably know, my family has been here for, I'm a fifth generation Vermonter. I live in the house someone in my family built in 1820 in Katie's Falls. And that's part of the change in the zoning that is just driving me over the deep end. But that's okay, We'll I'll do my research on that. Um, I think I'm concerned about rushing this. I'm concerned about a rush to finish it. And I do understand, you know, things can, the status quo is okay right now. Let's just make this work right. Let's get it right so that everybody's happy. Because I'm at a point where I'm ready to move. I'm ready to move. I'm the last draper in Katie's Falls. The last one. All the other ones are gone. And now, and I'm ready to move. I'm going to Alaska, live for your guys to <laughs> That's New Hampshire. That's New Hampshire. <laughs> You'll have both of our. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. So is there a motion? Bob? There's one more. Wait, there's one more question back there. I saw, I saw a hand go up. Here we go. Hi, my name is Lisa. I just have to say, I guess my biggest concern is with the next public meeting. Will be in a location that um, more people can attend with the schools in. Thank you. This is not working. <laughs> right. Can I ask one quick question? It's just Again? where we can get information. Go ahead. Where can we as um, property taxpayers get the information on what, um, a, a, like Mr. Mink would have to pay towards the sewer system or the water system when they put up buildings, when they put up big apartment houses? What is there, is there a fee 
each apartment house. You're in the, yes. Kathy, you're in the wrong building. That's no, right. I'm That's not. That's my pattern. Morrisville Water Village Water, Water Light. Three, okay. three, 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 four, eight. meeting Thursday, right? Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Okay, we've got two more questions, and that, that's going to be it. Go ahead, Nancy. Um, What's up? Quick, you have um, people online. I just wanted to mention that in the report, the report mentions top lake. I think what is very critical to Morrisville is that you have, here in Morrisville, we have three independent medical facilities that are not associated with any other organization. Uh, Memorial Health Partners, we probably have more, but Memorial Health Partners, Tamarack, and Copley. That's a real asset for this community, and I know that's partially addressed, but I think um, we should focus on the fact that that is an asset and that we should work to preserve that independence of those organizations to meet our needs. Thank you. Who else has a question? Trisha. Trisha. Oh, go ahead. Hey. I, I just want to say, and, and maybe it is because I'm on the inside track here, but I have worked very closely with the planning commission on this. This has been a very public three-year plan, this town plan. I mean, I hear people say like they didn't know about it. You know, it's been in the papers. It's been on Front Porch Farm. It's been on uh, very, very social. This is this is not like like... I've seen, I've worked for the town for 11 years. I've seen some things that I felt were a little bit like back room kind of quiet things. This has been a very, very public meeting um, thing that everyone was invited to. And I understand like now that people are coming out and they're, they're voicing their concerns. That's absolutely fabulous that you're voicing your concerns. But I really do feel like we are down to the wire on this. You know, we were talking about um, becoming a designated downtown. I really thought I would be applying for a designated downtown last fall. We are now, and we are into next year, at least by the time we even get to this point. I, I think it, these points that everyone brought up are really, really good, but I think they should be maybe brought into our next town plan that we start again once we get through this town plan right now. I mean, I really do feel like we're at the, the end of the rope here. And, you know, we had some comments that someone wanted to see our designated downtown expanded. We went to the state. The state was like, no, you can't extend your boundaries. The select board also had said six months ago, no, nope, we're not expanding it because they're trying to encapsulate what is considered part of our designated downtown and how it is, what it does mean to us as a downtown. So I, I just want everyone to hear it from another point of view. Like we really, this could go on for another five years if everyone keeps going with all these points. But I think we've really, really done from a town's perspective, a great job with this town plan. And we have, we have talked about many issues, many, many, as you read through it. And we all will always have issues about it, but I want people to rally together and let's let's all try to work together on getting this to go through. Thank you. Thanks, Krista. Thanks a lot. That I echo all of those comments you made. You know, it, it's tough for me. We we sit on this side of the table and we're getting blasted from all you folks <laughs> that are hearing about it like the eleventh hour when yeah. I go to a planning council meeting and there's nobody there. There's nobody there. How, how many times do you have meetings and there's like just interested parties there, that's it, not, not, um, it happens. Yeah. So what you're experiencing is that it's now really visible, the growth is happening, and people are really concerned. Right. So that is part of what's driving. Mm -hmm. I get it. And I, and I want to say that I think that everybody has a different concern with what's going on in town. What might concern me isn't going to concern somebody else. True. So if Trish is still there, um, I think that you need to, to put more wording in things. So if I would have seen, like I said earlier, um, access road across blah, 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 you know, I would have been there because that concerns me. You need to be more transparent with what you're having in your meetings. And then I think more people would come forward. But I mean, I never saw anything posted that, you know, that that was going to happen or you were even meeting on that. 
So that's where that comes in, Trish. Thank you. And okay. if anybody's not sure who, who was speaking, it's Trisha Fowler, who is our community development coordinator. And um, I, I know that some people are looking around wondering who she was. Who was speaking oh, about. sorry about that. I should have said. Thank you, Kathy, Chafee. Uh, appreciate your comments. So then, uh, can I ask a question of you, Trisha? Yes. Um, you mentioned that um, for um, part of your concern is that um, to have this new document so you can apply for the downtown designation. Is yes. That what I, is that correct? Yes, uh, yes that is correct. This, this has to be adopted by the town of Morristown, the village of Morrisville. It has to be approved by Regional Planning Commission. There's a whole bunch of other facets that have to work into play to get this to go through. We have to have MAC and a whole bunch of stuff that has to go through. And then it gets submitted to the state of Vermont. This is because yeah. even if, if this was approved in January, you're talking next June before we're designated downtown anyways, because this is how long this process takes. I was directed by the select board to uh, start the designated downtown process at the same time the town plan. So now for more than two years, we've been dancing with this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I make motion that we recess the deliberative session immediately. Okay. What do you do you when you come back? The next, the next hearing is going to be January 3rd at 6 o'clock. So come on January 3rd at 6 o'clock. We're not going to make any motions tonight. So when you come back, the meeting is... Gary, can, Gary, can you add a date certain to your motion? January 3rd, 6 o'clock to continue the public hearing? Yeah. Yeah, so restate your motion, please, for the audience. Yeah. Make a motion that we adjourn the delivery session to be... To be reconvened January 3rd at 6 p.m. here at Morristown offices. I have a motion by Gary. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? We will, we will, we will reconvene back into our select board meeting after the delivery. Regular select board session. meeting after. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed. Eric, are there the changes or additions to the no. agenda? That sounds that's good. amazing. <laughs> Hearing none. We had, none. A bunch, we had a bunch of agenda. We were way over here. <laughs> approve the minutes. Approve the minutes of November 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I thought that I had voted no. I can't find it now. Um, on, and Sarah knows because she's did the audio. I thought I voted on no on um, the first motion made under number four. Um, sign a warning. Uh, the motion made by Brian Kellogg to mail out ballots with no return postage paid. I can go back and okay, I, I thought I voted no on that, but okay. you can check. Oh, yeah, because I would have voted no as well, I believe, because we want to post it paid. Okay, we can amend it. Okay. Right. If it if it if you see that I did, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are passed. <clears throat> Next, community concerns. Community concerns tonight. Pam. I have one. Hello, select board. Hello. Um, my name is Pam Love. I was here at the last meeting and speaking to you about animal control issues. And I just wanted to follow up with you to see if there was any progress um, updating any of the animal regulations and laws at this point. The answer is no. We haven't had time to do anything yet, but we uh, we have we are intending to probably most likely uh, contract it out because if we can't find somebody that can work for the town, you know, one of us or we're going to hire somebody or contract it out. But we we very much recognize we need to do something. And it's just, it's on our radar. We just have been really, really busy. I know Eric is 
more than right out straight. And, and yeah, no, I'm not getting after Brian. I think he does a good job. And as we know, one person, it's um, a little unreasonable. Um, I was doing a little research. So the last time that this ordinance was revised was 2015. Is that correct? Sounds right. Okay. Um, so I just wondered if you could clarify a few things in um, my reading and what I've written here. Um, I don't know if you have a particular ordinance um, in available or near you, but under um, <clears throat> section C, definitions, and going down to the section where it says running at large, it says running at large means a dog <coughs> and hybrid is not on a leash within the village limits. And um, I was wondering, does that mean the town as well? Thank <coughs> you. <coughs> I'm not sure. So we can check into these things. Yeah, these we can check into things. that. Um, I have this question. Right. Um, I think there's some gray areas in this. Um, and a big area is that people say the dog is on my property, so he doesn't have to be tethered or um, properly restrained. So back here again in the section where running dogs is, um, do they need to be tethered or fenced on private property? I don't think so. I don't think well, that's in there. Well, Brian said it's a law, not yeah. just in the village, right. but in the town. So I'm following through here to see just exactly right. where I stand with this. Because fact being, um, if the dog is on his lawn, he's you know a greatest dog, smartest dog. He never does anything wrong. But this particular time, I've had him jump out through the electric fences and come after us and you know a big dog coming at you i don't have anything it's any kind of dog i love all of them but they need to be tethered tended to and the rules really need to be clear because some will say oh he's on my land so i don't have i don't have to do that well how do you ensure that he's not going to come jump in the room after me um, you know, with my dog on a leash doing what I'm supposed to be. So I think there's a gray area there that if that could have some um, clarification would mm -hmm. be very helpful. Um, another thing um, to the vicious dog section, um, let me read it here. It says, number two, if any dog snaps or tears or clothes in any attempt to bite any person or persons, and the fact is proven to the animal control officer that dog or hybrid shall be deemed and declared by the animal control officer to be a vicious animal. Such animal shall be impounded. Now, as you know, the dog in, in uh, I spoke of last week, the ripped raincoat, and it could have been a lot worse than that. Um, was anything ever followed through with my incident? And there's no reports or anything to verify that anywhere. So these are things that would be most helpful. And I also wanted to say, October 31st, my incident happened at, which I spoke of, the four-way stop on Maple Street Mallet. Mine was on October 31st. November 4th, police officers were called for a flight attack in that same area on November 4th. So, um, you know, there again, it's a question of somebody in the village, great big dog, not tethered, and this happens. It's a recipe for disaster. So, um, as I say, clarification, I mean, something's gotta be done here. There is gonna be a lawsuit, yeah. and somebody's gonna get hurt. That would've been a little kid walking that, and, if the German Shepherd got out and that would be, it wouldn't be my conversation, it would be somebody else's and it would be terrible. Um, and it says on um, the section penalties and costs. Costs are set annually by the select board. So um, just the thought that if the fines and costs were raised and tickets were given out um, more, or at all, it might increase awareness of the owners. Um, you know, hey, this is what I need to be doing or I'm gonna get this fun. But we have a process written down, but there's no follow through on it. And, you know, 
Um, it's just hard to walk in the village, as I said, about 19, 20 miles. And just the other day on Union Street, I had a loose doggy out there. It was an older dog. I don't care if they're pink, purple, green, yellow. I mean, they need to be what they're doing. And I need to do what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's why I'm here. And I, I think it's an important issue. We have 550 registered dogs, 50 something registered. We have who knows how many unregistered. And then we have all these other people and all these great big apartments and stuff moving in as well. So I think um, it would be a great help if we really got down to business and got something done in this area. Definitely. So that's what I have to say. And thank you for your time. And I think. There again, some reports, incident reports, and things like that. I don't know if the police department has to write a ticket or a report for the right incident that they had in the same place. I don't know if you know that stuff should be available to the public. Right. Does now. that Jason? Does that go to Lamoille and get put down as an incident? If Brian does it or you do it? Well, the case that you're referencing, we got a call. I think we got it reported to the PD. So that one's yes. documented. Yeah. But most cases go direct for Brian. So he doesn't create an incident? No, he doesn't. He doesn't. And he doesn't write tickets. It he should, said, really. He said he has a really there ticket. A, yeah, there should be a documentation of everybody. Yeah. You can find the incident on the 4th of November involving non verbal client from the property house. Right. I mean, we had trouble because he was not able to indicate which home the dog came from, and there are two German shepherds in that Right, area. exactly. So it's in neither, neither one of them. You know, chain hook your dog or tether their dog. Right. So, but as far as that incident is concerned, we were not able to definitively show which house the dog came from. So, we aren't sure which shepherd it was. But it could, could still be documented that there, this happened in it, that area. It was. Okay. This one, I'm talking about this is the documented one that the, oh. she confirmed on the number four. Okay. Yeah. It was, and it was called in or reported after the fact to PD. They did generate an incident okay. for it. But Good. My follow up, I was not, not able to articulate to where this came from. Right. My incident was, and there was no anything done. Okay. And according to that regulation in there, if deemed um, by uh, Brian, that if this was, quote, a vicious, I don't know. Um, what else you would call a dog full force coming at you and ripping your jacket? It's not just a ring shell. I don't know what you call that. And there was no repercussions to my knowledge, not a fine or anything for this. And I mean, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's fair. Yeah, Somebody's going to get hurt. We need to update the dog policy for yeah. sure. But, but, but we've got to be careful with that because Pam and I had this conversation. That's why I was getting so animated and uncomfortable. I have two German Shepherds. They are like Michael Yard is fenced in. That's great. Now they, everybody they, did that. Yeah, Michael Yard is fenced in. When okay. I say sit, they sit. When they were out, we were walking on the rail trail and a deer came and they took off and I said, get back here. And they came back. And that so we've got to be careful because not all dogs are bad dogs. I'm right. Not, oh, that, it's not the dogs dog. that are bad, it's the owners that are bad. <laughs> well, that's true, but not all dogs are bad dogs. So right. you really have right. to watch. I'm not you here. know, they're trained. I had I had Tom come from he does training. He was a guard down at the federal building when I was working down there, and he does dog training and he came and trained my dogs when they were puppies. Right. So they they they're very good trained, well trained. But you know, not all are bad. Right. I'm not so. saying they're bad, Kelly. I'm just no, saying no, that I know you're not. There it's should just... always be that one time that the well trained dog can do it. I mean, right. there's no good no, they're, they're not supposed to. Right. They're, they're like police dogs. Those two are like police dogs. They were trained by a state yeah. police officer that trained police dogs. I don't think dogs. That these ones that I'm speaking of perhaps have that yeah. kind of training for. Well, we will keep working on it. We're going to work on it. And... I you can check it. back in, but we will keep on it. I appreciate it. Yeah, what if we put it in the budget framework? Do you remember? Uh, the budget we're in? What was the proposal for next year? Oh, I don't know what we did. I can go check. I thought we increased the appropriation. We probably did. I think that we were thinking that we would need to do that. Because we were talking about the contract and services. So yeah. we, we have an increase the appropriation. It's not the action we're looking for, but forward looking. We know we're not going to be able to find somebody 
like Brian, who wants, you know, gives more of his time than the money ever compensates for. No, but if you raise but, the fines and that kind of stuff, you know, well, I there's understand ways. the fines don't come to the town. They go to the general fund. There are tickets written for civil violations okay. on the there state court. Go. We don't see that money. Okay. But we so could. We like, could make a fee if it comes to the town. Yeah. Something will be done. We could create an ordinance. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. a parking ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a parking ticket. Yeah, and if tickets were really given out, as I said, you know, people would be more aware. If, yeah. But we have a ticket book, but we need to write them. Right. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for coming in again, Pam. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank Thanks for your time. Do we have any more community concerns? All right, we'll move to new business. Discuss and approve. Um, I think there's something in here. I can't see who you're seeing. Uh -oh. I only see us. That's Allison Link. Okay, go ahead, Allison. She's muted. I can't hear you. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Uh, we still can't hello? hear you. Hello? 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 No. It must be your audio. Hello? No, I'm not on mute. Um, hello? No. No. Allison, I can hear you on Zoom. Oh, okay. No audio. They're turned down, aren't they? Maybe they can so. hear me. So can the select board hear me? It's Jeff Egan. Okay, we cut you now. Hello? Go ahead, Allison. Can you hear Allison now? Oh, thanks, Jeff. <laughs> that was helpful. Um, hi everyone, Allison Link, um, 35 Clark Ave, and also um, from Healthy Lamoille Valley. I just wanted to um, just make the public comment that um, Healthy Lamoille Valley will be attending the information session on Thursday and that we have been preparing um, resources to help the community become informed on Act 164 and cannabis retail and so just be on the lookout for, um, you know, the rollout of a variety of resources starting tomorrow. And um, just wanted to let folks know that it's, um, that we just wanna have, uh, you know, informed voters in Morristown on Act 164. And so therefore there'll be a, a series of things coming out this week and, um, and Jessica Bickford will be there on Thursday um, to ask questions or, or share just um, more about Act 164 and process and um, any other questions that folks may have that we can help um, in answering. So thanks. Thank thanks, Allison. Thank you. Any more community concerns? All right, hearing none, now we'll go to new business. Discuss and approve updated non-union pay scales. I have a, I have a corrected one for you. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you this one to sign, Bob, in case you guys decide to sign it. The only thing that's different about this one than the one you have is there was a note that we took off of this one because it really wasn't.
to bring you a, a budget proposal that is uh, as accurate as possible. We are still chasing a couple of dollar figures that happens every year with this, and in particular with the highway projects, trying to move all those numbers down uh, a little higher. But uh, they have, Tina and Paula have been working many hours of overtime uh, in order to get this done. We are already, Tina has already put a plan in place to begin this process two months earlier next year. Um, but they are excellent staff, uh, smiles on their faces, even though their eyes tell me they're very tired. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of them and the work that they do. <clears throat> Makes you realize that more and more now that you're in the role well, you're in. I'm telling you, the perspective is everything. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, that's my report. Great. Thank you. That's it, Eric? It is. Any questions for Eric? Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, next, select board concerns. Gary. No, the only one I had was the Washington Highway Paving, and that's been addressed. Yeah. And I was pretty aware that we wouldn't have any striping done this year at this point in time. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't think I have anything. Um, I know the, the town and the village are preparing for winter. Yeah. Pretty well ready to go, I believe. So let the snow begin. <laughs> Yay. Right. I did encourage a whole lot to that. Last week, I, uh, I met with both the village garage on town highway garage, Cochrane Road, and have uh, open discussions with them. I've been trying to do this for a couple of months. Um, I encouraged them last week with the Veterans Day holiday on Thursday to take Friday as a day off. All but two uh, took the day off. Um, they're coming into a season where they don't see four day weekends or four days off in a row. So I, uh, they all seem to jump on that idea and got a good little break. Uh, worked out very well. We uh, went to uh, breakfast with the Highway Department, yep, Gary, and myself, and uh, Kevin, good. and Scott. And all the highway guys. Uh, very productive and very appreciative it was. Uh, as well. We talked a lot about safety concerns, and I reiterated to all the boys that in my past employment that I was responsible for safety. And I just suggested that, you know, I had, I always had all my guys report to the office every Monday morning for 15, 20 minute safety meeting just to. Quick refresher course. Uh, it doesn't take long with you know fifty to seventy guys to add the price tag up pretty fast, but it was well worth it. Um, and it's just a friendly reminder. Uh, and I encourage all the highway department guys to do the same. And you don't have to belittle anybody. All you got to do is say, "Hey, if you're doing that, you ought to wear your face shield, or you ought to put your gloves on, or something like that." Just just common sense stuff and. Uh, Everybody seemed to be appreciative and probably more appreciative of the breakfast than they were of me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right, thanks, Gary. Judy. I want to thank the highway department because they fixed the um, piece of equipment up by the dog park. It was broken and they, they saw to it and they not only fixed that piece, but they reinforced the other uh, piece of equipment there. So thank you. Um, and I, I know that I thought about this before our meeting today, but looking at some type of strategic planning meeting with the select board and or the planning commission and DRB somewhere to start visioning for the future for our community. And I know I shared with Eric and Eric's kind of on the same page with that too. And um, since we have Todd here, there was an article in the paper and you were quoted. And I did come in and talk to Eric about it, but I'm wondering if you could speak to that article about the the development. And uh, but you were you were quoted there, and my understanding is you hadn't talked to the newspaper. So I don't. It's about uh, about the make property, the make, make proposal. The oh, the you mean the 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 uh, the article would give the impression that the meetings weren't warned. As Gary can tell you. Both meetings were warned. Uh, I even warned the site walk. You're not supposed to really warn site walks, and I warned the site walk just because the uh, I was being pushed to do so. And then I warned the site walk, and then I kind of got hung up to drive for it in the paper anyway. So it's kind of a can't win type thing. 
The meetings are all warned. They're published in the newspaper. They're here in the window. They're at the library. They're in the post office. I mean, they're everywhere. We're on the website. We're above and beyond what we need to do for warning meetings. And for a DRB hearing, the neighbors, the abutting properties, anyone with 100 feet gets a letter sent to them by me. Uh, the people who are half a mile across town have no legal standing in a DRB proceeding. And the DRB uh, has to determine who's an interested party or not. Interested party means in close proximity. So as much as someone from uh, from Skyview Acres, sorry, Tom, name popped into my head. I apologize. <laughs> wants, <laughs> wants, wants to chime in about something. That's on, why he's here. <laughs> on Jersey <laughs> Heights, they have no legal standing. And if I start, if I start uh, sending letters to invite people who have no legal standing to hearings, we risk, we risk getting sued by the developer. So it's a very thin, careful line we have to walk. I mean, these, yes, these are public meetings, but not all the public is standing in these meetings. The courts have defined who is a legal standing and who doesn't, and only those neighbors in close proximity. Uh, recently, the DRB on Gordon Lane, there's nine units there. There's a 16 unit being, being, being constructed probably in the spring. I thought this fall, but it doesn't look like it given the weather. The DRB, there was a party who lived at the end of Audi Lane, which isn't too far. I mean, I think it was 1,700 feet as a crow flies. The DRB failed to make a determination. The DRB was split, so we left it at, we, we didn't determine if it was an interested party. We didn't say it was a non-interested party. And the that person appealed the DRB's permit to court. Uh, Graham and his development team, wherever that entity LLC was, had to go to court to get him uh, get the lawsuit dismissed because he did not meet the definite of an interested party. So in that case, we were very liberal with saying this person can participate. We didn't say he wasn't interested. He appealed the project and went to court and the court said he's not an interested party. DRB, you can't do this. You have to say if that this person's so far away, they have no standing. So to be very careful. We can't invite everyone to the hearings. There, it's not a select board hearing. It's not a planning meeting. We want everyone from the community. There's a certain people in a certain defined legal distance you have to be to actually chime in a DRB project. Well, and I, and I think the one of the reasons I brought up is after talking to Eric, finding out that you were quoted in the paper, but you were never interviewed by the paper. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I was never. Yes, okay. all from emails. Yeah, the, right. the the paper hasn't doesn't reach out to me for my quotes. It never has really. So I just I just wanted to clarify that. Oh, thank you. And Sorry. Make it public knowledge. Oh, he was quoted from emails on exchange between him and another citizen in town. That citizen. Yeah, sure okay. Did I miss the point of the whole question? I apologize. Yeah, that's okay. My bad. Starting to get it. <laughs> yeah. Is, are you talking about the part where it accused him of withholding information from a public record of the class? It was a whole general article that, yeah, and, and of course I hadn't heard anything because I was just kind of related and yeah. mm -hmm. I shouldn't have heard anything like that. But, uh, so, anyways, that was a mistake on my part and, uh, and uh, I apologize. Well, I did the same thing. I read the paper. Yeah. I talked to Eric about it. Eric set me straight on what was actually going on, and I thought it was important to the public know yeah, yeah. at this meeting. It's it's televised. It's, it's that it's that uh, the, to to clear the air. That's it. Let's put the facts out. Like that, I will call whoever. Good idea. Yeah, in fact, I would like to add, for the DRB's purposes, the DRB approved that project in open session. They actually didn't even go into delivery session. That's actually a remarkable form of open government. There's a couple of members of the DRB who want to do things in front of the public, no matter what it is. I can't imagine any town around anywhere in the state approving 136 units in open session. It does not happen. This DRB did it. Literally, they couldn't have been more public. Every single thing was warned. We warned things that didn't legally need to be warned legally, and they approved the hearing in open session 
in front of a room with some people who didn't like the project and you still get killed. So you, you really can't win. I think, and I, I wasn't really aware, but what a lot of things you're talking about are happening in the back several pages of the newspaper. So to direct the public's attention to the, that area, that's where they can see where all the warnings are for the meetings. Sure. Thank you, Judy. Senator? Yes. Thank you. Do you think I should go on? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Gary's the chair of the DRB. Obviously, Gary, everything was publicly warned, and we went overboard and warned a yeah, site walk that didn't need to be warned. You can check with that. I'm always on him about making sure so-and-so knows about this or making sure everybody knows this and that. You can't be careful enough, no. yeah. as you're well aware. I mean, it, yeah. and the stuff still gets out there, it's out of context. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, I've just a few things, hopefully they're very brief. Um, one is I, um, I just wanted to say that Eric um, and I not met with Drew um, from the SE group who entered the RFP um, around um, creating some um, vision and um, for green space around town. Um, I thought it was a really successful meeting and um, we'll be getting a, a proposal, um, a, a, a several tiered proposal that we can um, review um, and, and hopefully choose one um, within the next month or so, um, where he's gonna, he'll, he'll give us, he said he, he'd give us like an a la carte option. Um, you know, he can do anything from making really simple drawings to recommending um, people um, who can um, do um, road type assessments um, to um, pointing us towards funding sources. Um, and he just had a lot of great ideas. Um, and um, I think I think it'll be really great to see what he comes up with. Um, so that was a good success meeting last Wednesday. Um, uh, the info session um, at the community, um, the info session on Thursday at six o'clock at the community uh, Memorial, Civic Memorial Civic Center next to Cumberland Farms. Um, I affectionately call Cumbies, as I'm sure many of you all do. Um, I've had um, several people ask me if there's any way that we can, I know it wouldn't be this setup, but if there's any way that we can have Zoom available. Um, but this, I, okay, so this is like so many people who um, are just like at home with their kids or whatever, mm -hmm. just want to be able to listen in, not even necessarily participate. Is it possible even to just have like um, the town laptop there um, for people to get some kind of audio? I don't, I mean, I don't want to create, I don't want to create um, um, a, a situation that makes the whole meeting like take longer than it needs to or more difficult. But in the name of getting more people the information that they need, because I feel like it's two really important um, articles that will be taught, like just getting gathering information about the school school board article or, and the and the article around the marijuana dispensary resources um, production. So let me make um, a suggestion. Why don't you reach out? Why don't you reach out to GMA TV tomorrow? Okay. And let's see if they have availability to broadcast from that site with their equipment. Yeah. Okay. We, we, this is all their stuff. Right, okay. But I yeah. can follow that cord. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. So don't ask me where I don't want to go. So right. anyway, would they have the expertise. Let me just see okay. if they'd be interested in broadcasting that information. Yeah. Or at least recording it to yeah. rebroadcast. Yeah. I just, there's, I mean, I've had a, I've had a lot of, because I'm working in the school now too. Just there's a lot of people who just want to know, get, there's confusion about it. What does a no vote mean? What does the yes vote mean? If we're going to be having really high voter turnout, I just want to make sure that people are checking the box that they need to check, you know, and um, has has big um, consequences for all of us. Um, so. But continue back to Joseph Depp, the yeah. superintendent is going to be at Great, the yeah, Brian Harry, and, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. he'll be there for questions. Whether yeah. how how deep his questions yeah. and answers can go, I'm not sure. Either. Great, great, yeah. So Probably more reason. I we think could that. Some of us could probably. I don't know. I don't want to suggest that. No. Okay, never mind. Right. I, I know you're doing <laughs> right. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, good. You can listen in on my phone. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah, I thought I don't think that's legit. Not a good idea. Yeah, that was a good idea, but um, <laughs> um uh, let's see. Um, I think tonight, um, the the issue or the um, there's been some just like some. I don't know if I want to elevate it to the status of issue, but. Um, there's just been talk tonight about how do we get 
the word out to the public around our meetings. And I know because I'm new in this realm that it can be difficult for me to navigate and to understand where to get the information. I'm not saying that we're doing it wrong. I'm just saying that maybe there's a way that it can be more accessible. And um, I'd be interested in visiting that, revisiting that, hearing other people's, um, young people in the community's ideas about how to, um, how to make um, community meetings more um, like when they happen, how you get there, how you zoom in, um, just make that information just quick and easy. Right now, I can find it because I'm very persistent, and you, it, it's a few clicks. You have to go, you know, to this calendar or this, um, you know, government entity, and you find it. But that's me. I don't think the average person has an easy time. Is it so? In the paper on that back page where they have the warnings are, it has the agenda. Yeah. I haven't looked at this. It's terrible. So the agenda is there for the planning commission and the DRB and DRB for board. warrant hearings would be there. Any planning warrant hearings, the normal week to week planning hearing would not be in the paper, okay. but any warrant hearings do. Every DRB hearing is warned uh, in the paper. It has to be by state law and the neighbors, the interested parties who are potential parties all get personalized letters in the mail from me. Okay. I was thinking as simple as like, a front, you know, a porch form reminder and um you know just like one um easy link on the landing page of our website where you can see a list of all the meetings and the agendas and, i don't know it's just it, we can we can discuss later i just i i feel like that's been some consistent feedback um and uh i want to very briefly just say I also was quoted in the news and citizen and I was not um, accurately not quoted. accurately <laughs> and I, I wasn't called for comment or for fact checking I mean I th I don't think what I said was terribly far off what I said was terribly far off but I can um, appreciate that experience welcome to my world yeah <laughs> that's it that's all okay your turn, Bob. I hate to bring this subject up oh. because we haven't talked about it all night. And I was really oh. deliberating. <laughs> <clears throat> but I have to because I just want to make a clarification for folks that might be listening <clears throat> about uh, the vote on December 7th for the ATVs. And I've gotten contacted by a lot of people that are still leery that our board will in fact um, not create an ordinance for ATVs if the vote is yes or if the vote is no and I have pulled all the select board members everyone I talked to and everybody is in the same thinking that if the vote is no then we will not create an ordinance for ATVs we were going to follow what the vote says and I mean, I'm, I'm serious. I've had at least 10, 12 people contact me asking me. You haven't, Tom, but no. um, a lot of people have. And I just want to make it very clear to people we've all decided we're going to follow what the vote is. That's what we wanted to, to get as many people to decide on this as we could. And um, just to have it out there publicly so everybody can, can rest assured that we're not going to go against even though it's a non-binding vote and we can in fact authorize it if we want right. we won't okay yeah but. and uh bob this is jeff egan out in zoom that's why i say th thanks for the clarification just because there was a little bit of like well if the vote's close you know it's still our purview so i appreciate you clarifying that thank you and that's all i have I'm going to take back that and just reiterate that our informational meeting at the Civic Center is not talking about ATVs. There is no agenda item about ATVs. Right. Yeah. It is not about ATVs. We will not be talking about ATVs. We're going to do we're going to do whack a mole if anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. agree. I'm with that. <laughs> okay. All right. That's it. Do we have any old business? No more business. Any other business? Are we going to do Donnie Blake to DRB, or is that a future agenda? Uh, future agenda. Future agenda. It's okay. That's what I stuck around for. Make, I'll make a motion to adjourn. As a motion by Judy. Second, second by Jess. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Yay. And now adjourn. Thank you all.